Pride Month. Pride <laughs> <laughs> Pride Month. Is that what you said? I mean, it sure is. Is it? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I've been seeing it everywhere. Is, is it Pride Month? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gay people get more months than black people. Yeah. I believe they have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like. Y'all still fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all here fighting for our lives. Yeah, dude, they get so much fucking love. Even black people are like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> what we do? We get a month? We the shortest month of the year. Yeah, and we didn't even have a choice. They chose that. Like, I just came here. I just, I'm I black. Bro, just like this. <laughs> Welcome in to the Jordy Colada show. Wave your hand out there, baby! Shout out to the show. She puts the pinky into the nostrils. Man, look at that. Healthy competition, there's nothing like it. Y'all grow up. The line's wrapped around the stadium. <laughs> Different strengths. Mm -hmm. I just lost a tooth. It's gonna be fun. You know, we might have a story. I love what you're doing. Here. Ogeron wants to take us fishing this afternoon. Sharif, you play for the bad boys of the SEC, man. We don't apologize <laughs> to anybody. A lot of people are saying you're going to be wearing number seven. I don't really know. I want to. He <laughs> look crazy, Bill. <laughs> Good feet on the old man. Let's go! Boot up! Boot up! Let's go! Oh, no. <laughs> we'll be right back with the Jordy Galata Show. <laughs> Welcome in to a Thursday edition of the Jordy Collada Show live here on June 1st, first of the month. Hey, Wake up. Wake up. Uh, yes, up. We used to rock that on the radio. Oh, yeah. Old radio. Every morning, yeah, going to can't do it anymore. <laughs> in the days of digital age, you can't do it. That's one of the drawbacks. Well, you can sing it yourself. Uh, hit it, Stewie. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. It's the first of the month. Stewie on lead vocals. That ain't yeah. me, bro. Um, 7.30 this morning, we are going to talk to Jack Karavich. Jack Karavich is from Tiger Air, and I'm sure you saw yesterday the social media LSU unveiling the air-conditioned helmets uh, that looks like they're going to wear them here coming up in the fall. We're going to talk to Karavich about the product as uh, it was all over um, social media yesterday. Uh, guys like Mac Markway uh, trying on the helmet and giving instant reaction 
Um, so we will talk to Jack Karavich about that product coming up here at 7.30 this morning. 8.15, Chris Blair uh, from the LSU Sports Radio Network as we'll talk LSU baseball uh, as the Tigers get ready. A day away from the opening round of the Baton Rouge Regional as LSU and, a- and uh, Tulane will be the first game of the day at 2 o'clock as the Tigers will uh, will face off against the Greenies. Uh, no official report on pitching. I expect them to go with Thatcher Hurd, right? I mean, we're expecting that, right? Yeah, Thatcher Hurd or Ty Floyd, I would imagine. You, the people are putting that bug in my ear where it felt like, and even what Ronnie said uh, the other day was a little interesting when he wanted to go almost relief pitching only mm-hmm. for Tulane because of the draw. But I don't know why you wouldn't just trot Thatcher out there. He makes the most sense to me. He's been looking better, and if he get in trouble, then you can go Johnny Holstaff. But I think you'll just be able to outscore Tulane, and I would throw Thatcher out there. I, I would think so, too, man. But I mean, no pitching reports and no injury reports. Uh, which you will not get. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like it's, season, right? it's not happening. Um, have to but put, hey, look, put it, this puzzle together ourselves. You look at the number, right? I mean, 19 wins for Tulane on the season. Uh, just about, you know, like right at under 500. Uh, what are they, 20 and 40, 19 and 40 yeah. on the year? 19 and 40. Um, um, do you not think they could just run Javen Coleman out there, maybe? I, look, like, I, I, I think that makes sense. It's, it's, a, it's a gamble on, you know, not going with somebody that you're, you're 100% confident in, but you're also looking at what's in front of you and, you know, what's in the opposite dugout tomorrow. No disrespect, and baseball is a wild game where. You know, you catch somebody on their day, and they, they could win the league after only winning 19 games like Tulane's done. So not only have they done that here recently, they're a confident and team that's probably feeling themselves a little bit coming over to Baton Rouge. And, you know, at this point, you know, th- th- there's, no, there's no room or there's little there's small no automatic room wins. for error, right? I mean, you can't just say this is a, this is a, this is a midweek win that you can count on. Uh, I do think that Thatcher Hurd has been trending in a direction where, you know, you've seen his, his confidence really start to grow. You know, you've seen that, that hopefully really start to take shape. And, you know, an assignment like this, opening round of a, of a regional where, you know, they need you to go as deep as you can to, to, to keep as many guys fresh and on the shelf. Um, I, I would say that he, he, he kind of fits – yeah, it's a perfect scenario to throw Thatcher, in my mind. It just, if it would have been a Nichols or if you get UL, then maybe you have a different conversation. But just because of the way Tulane got into the tournament, they're batting 250 as a team, and I think they have an ERA over seven. So that's a recipe in which you can, you can get the, the start with Thatcher where you feel comfortable leaving him out there. You don't have to yank him immediately. Absolutely. And, no, I think so too, yeah. And if you're going to go the Javin Coleman route, I feel like that kind of sets you up for almost a – like that sets you up for failure just because you haven't seen him gone an extended amount of time coming off the injury. So they haven't really juiced up his pitching numbers. So if he gets into a scenario where he's walking some people early on and he gets to 65, 70 pitches and in inning two, inning three, then you got to take him out because he's totally, he's on a limited pitch count. So Thatcher isn't. So you just let him go out there, you roll the rock out and say, you have this thing until four or five innings. Like I, tr- I trust you wholly to get us out of this, whatever you get in. So you can relax. You don't have to look over your shoulder. What do you go six in his last appearance? I think five, five and a third. We'll take that. Yeah, yeah. and that'll do it. You know, I mean, oh, like, if he does know. that, then you just score. Absolutely, you can rely on your offense in a game like this. So hopefully, um, we will see uh, where LSU goes. As as Jay Johnson said, he's not going to give any updates on injuries. He's not going to give any updates on starting pitching. Uh, so we'll just have to play the guessing game up until tomorrow at two o'clock when LSU and Tulane square off officially for the opening game of that Baton Rouge Regional. So we'll talk more about that in the second hour coming up uh, with Chris Blair. But what a great time of the year, right? I mean, this is – his summer is, is here. Kids are officially out of school. The Baton Rouge Regional will be there tomorrow. LSU playing in the matinee. I know some and, – and, and a lot of people out there do have, you know, commitments and, and, and jobs that they have to stay tied down to and – Man, I, I hate that for you, and I, I know that that's that that's going to be stressful having to watch you know a couple hours of the game uh, from your desk or listening to it on the radio or however you can break away and get it. But if you're able to 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 knock off tomorrow and you know take the kids out to to the game or get out to the box, um, it's just a it's a great time. And for for LSU baseball fans that have been around for a while, right? I mean, this is this is kind of almost. 
um, tradition at this time of the year in, in, in growing up here in, in Baton Rouge and, and, and being a lifelong LSU fan. Um, you know, I, I still remember very vividly um, when the regional was a couple of weeks earlier and, and, and being checked out of school or, or, or school ending, uh, you know, kind of coming to the, 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 to the end of the year and, and going out to the box and spending all weekend, like getting there Friday at, you know, 1 o'clock and not leaving until Sunday night when the, the, the final game has happened. So um, I, I love this time of the year from, from, from a baseball standpoint where, you know, I mean, these guys almost become – you know, pseudo big leaguers for, for, for the you know next couple of weeks. And um, LSU obviously trying to find their footing going into this part of the year. Um, I think that, you know, like we talked about Thatcher Hurd getting a start uh, in, in, in the last regular season game or coming in in that last regular season game like he did on the road against Georgia and saving that win on Thursday night when, you know, Skeens had, had kind of gotten lit up a little bit. Um, or, or giving him the ball with a 5-2 lead, uh, and, and Thatcher Hurd had come in and gotten lit up a little bit and was able to respond from that. And then, you know, the next week starting the opening round versus the SEC tournament in South Carolina and being able to really compete and find some, some confidence there, I, I think it makes perfect sense to hand him the ball tomorrow and say, hey, man, go out there and do what you do. Do what you've been doing. Keep growing on that. That way LSU can, you know, continue to – receive some benefits from him, um, you know, throwing it so well right now. Um, so we'll talk more LSU baseball as uh, the Tigers and Greenies will square off tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Uh, remember, Daily, we're brought to you by RMB Builders. Rhett Bourgeois and the crew over at RMB, they're online and they're also on Instagram. Easy follow on Instagram to keep up with all the projects. A lot of cool stuff happening over at RMB right now that you can learn about at RMD, uh, rmb-builders.com. Also told you about our guy over at uh, Tiger Air, which yesterday it was unveiled. LSU going to play this season with these air-conditioned football helmets. Uh, Jack Karavich, who is uh, behind this product at Tiger Air, is going to be here at 7.30 this morning giving us a little insight on uh, the, uh, the deal. You know, what's it like working with uh, – um, LSU, what's it been like kind of putting this product together and now seeing it come to light? Um, yeah, if you have any questions for uh, Karavich or interested in learning a little bit more about that product, we'll tell you how uh, coming up here in about 15 minutes as uh, he'll be here. Uh, SEC spring meetings continuing to roll on uh, down in Destin. And as we said, you the hot topics e uh, earlier this week, eight to nine game scheduling and uh, we, we should see that decided on maybe even today, but I would say at least by, by the end of the weekend, uh, you, you would have some type of outcome after, you know, getting everybody together in, in the same room and being able to have these conversations and, and talk things out. And as Greg, as Greg Sankey, uh, you know, pointed out um, earlier this week that, you know, he kind of had his mind made up. He was going to let, he was going to let the room and, 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 and let the, um, you know, kind of let the coaches and, and, and presidents figure that out, what they wanted to do. But, you know, for the most part, they had, they had a feeling on where it was going. Um, Ross Dellinger, who's down there covering uh, the spring meetings for Sports Illustrated, did tweet out yesterday, if an eight-game schedule is, is voted on, and, and, and that's how they stick, LSU's permanent opponent going to be Texas A&M. And Ross Bjork actually uh, sat down with Dellinger last night in, in in kind of these press gaggles that you can find uh down at at, at this um, you know at, at sec spring meetings and you know he pretty much tipped his hand he said that you know lsu would would, would be texas a&m's permanent opponent if um if eight games is the outcome of of the vote so um you know a lot of stuff moving and shaking this is really i'm telling you this is for at least the traditional college football fan, and I, I know that the last three years has had more change in college sports, specifically college football, than the game has experienced in the last 30. I mean, I, I don't want to be too dramatic on that, but I mean, it, it, reality. I mean, like, ha have we seen as much change as we've seen in college sports, specifically college football, over the last three years, compared to the last 25 years, 
I mean, I can't remember so many polarizing changes, transfer portal, NIL, um, conference expansion, playoffs, right? Like, I mean, all of this, the, these topics that we're seeing, have, you know, taking shape over the last couple of years have really, you know, changed the mark of the game. It's about to go to a whole nother level. Like, this is the last year that for the traditionalists, or at least people that, that you know, kind of like the way that things have been, are going to be able to watch the game like that, right? Where it's not totally chaotic from super leagues and new television. It's the last year you'll be able to watch CBS and the SEC. That schedule was announced yesterday at just the time slots and, you know, I mean, your typical 2.30 Central Standard Time. One to watch out for, though, is that that first Saturday in November when LSU-Alabama match up, CBS did secure the doubleheader and the night game for, for mm. that Saturday. And you, you'd have to be a fool to be a TV executive to look at last year's yeah. game between LSU and Alabama where that thing went into overtime, double, you know, OT, and you, know, you got 100,000 people spilling onto the field afterwards uh, yeah. after the outcome. What a night. Right? So I think CBS wants some of that. Um, and, and LSU should find their way back to prime time with that Alabama game. Um, this year it'll be in Tuscaloosa. But just getting back to it, this is the last year you'll watch SEC on CBS. Watch, I mean, how long have we been doing that? 20 years, 25 years? Oh, my goodness, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know it any other way. I mean, I, I, I don't know SEC football any other way than to watch it on, um, you know, either Jefferson Pilot or CBS, right? I mean, for the last – I would say 30 years, years of my me, life, sure. my, 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 my television, wherever I was watching football, was stuck on CBS from the time that I, I nearly woke up till, till we went to bed. Vern. Right? <laughs> the sweet pipes of Vern. Yeah, Last, you would go college game day straight to CBS. You'd just kind of wait for the CBS yeah. 230 game. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you would even kind of get into the 11 a.m. SEC mm -hmm. game. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's a right? But you're like I mean, puttering around yeah, waiting for like. Right. I mean, but it's two. always on. It's, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's lurking always, in the back. It's always there. Channel 10 in Alexandria. <laughs> right. So <laughs> Don't touch that dial. Last year, uh, uh, CBS. <laughs> last year, CBS and, and the SEC exist. It's the last year the SEC is going to exist without expansion. Texas and Oklahoma are going to be here next year. The Big 12 is about to experience enormous expansion. UCLA and USC are leaving the Pac-12, leaving, uh, leaving the West Coast and joining the Big 12. There's going to be new television contracts everywhere. It's going to be the third year of NIL. right? At this point, you'll, pro you'll probably find some type of model that they're, they're, they're at least using. Transfer portal will be, you know, well established at that time. College football is about to be totally different than what we've grown up with, been accustomed to, been watching for so long, right? I mean, it's it's changing underneath our feet as we watch it, and this will be the last year that it really feels like that. I mean, next year you're going to be watching the SEC on ABC. You're going to be watching the majority of the games on your phone. Be watching the majority of the games on your computer. Be watching the majority of the games on digital stuff. You have to be searching and trying to find oh, it. Tiger Drop is going to be a flame. Where is like, where's the game? Like I said, you've got I West Coast teams out. that are now traveling down to play Big 12 opponents because they're in the same league. That oh, yeah, that's USC and UCLA no longer playing in the Pacific Coast League. The, you know, Pac-10, Pac-12, they're done. Pac-12 after dark is cooked. That's unfortunate. Damn, this watch. So they have, they're they're going to the obviously Big Ten. So it'll be a lot up at like Ohio State country. Uh, Big Ten, Big Ten, Big, Big Ten. Ten, Big Ten. Where's Oregon going? Oregon staying. They're staying firm in the Pac-12 for now, but yeah, there's but not going to be a Pac-12. Doesn't feel like. I was about to say, but what they tried they? to realign, didn't they? The Pac-12. They grabbed Colorado. They grabbed some schools. They still yeah. have Utah, but USC would be the the headliner of the Pac-12. That's that left left their own conference. What, what do you think is the of all of the changes that have happened in college football, which it all seems they've happened, A, very quickly, and B, a ton of them, which one do you think has shaken the landscape up most to this point? Not even close, NIL. NIL or transfer no, portal? No, not even close. Then, hand in hand. NIL. I mean, if you look at the comments coming out of Destin Jesus. from some of the most powerful figures in college sports, they are lost. They are just trying to find their way. 
they can't find any type of resolution to this. I mean, Brian Kelly said it on Paul Feinpalm's show. He supports federal federal law on NIL. You got to take it away from the states. You got to take it away from individual states that are being able to really kind of dictate the way that college sports are run. Right? This goes back to Mark Emmert and the NCAA kind of tucking and running on this thing. But, I mean, somebody has to step in here and say, hey, look, these are the rules in which this is going to operate. This can't continue to operate at an individual state level that gives, you know, I mean, it, 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 it literally is. I mean, when you start, that, that Ross Dellinger report at Sports Illustrated is very eye-opening to what, administrators, coaches, presidents are dealing with. I mean, I, look, I'm not saying and throwing a pity party for these people. And I know that they, you know, get paid very well and they get paid a lot of money and, you know, they've, they, they've put their time in. But, I mean, asking them to, to, to navigate what they're doing. I mean, I was listening to Hugh Freeze yesterday on Sirius XM uh, 84 with Hester and, and, and Chris Doring are down in Destin covering that event for Sirius XM, for Sirius 84. And Hester is sitting there with, with Hugh Freeze and asks him specifically of, um, like, what's it like being back? And I mean, Hugh Freeze, and Hugh Freeze, is a, he's a pretty likable guy, like when you hear him talk. Like when you just like hear him speak, I mean, it's, he, he's kind of a good old, he's got that draw. He does, you know, he, I mean, he knows what he's doing. I mean, he's, he, I, I can't imagine how dramatic he is in a living room with a mom kind of playing up like the good old boy stuff. But he, he was literally like, this has to stop. He's like, th there's no break for college coaches anymore he's like when i left the league you know at the end of april and into may you could be a dad you could go watch your kid play baseball you could go because there was no there there was it was illegal to do anything so you just couldn't you couldn't operate in those months now with the transfer portal and with any you know with, with, with guys that are coming in on official visits during that time, I mean, he's peeling guys off the road. He's, you know, spending a lot more time at the building. And again, I'm not feeling sorry for these guys, but you're asking them to do almost impossible work with no governing of the NIL, the transfer portal windows and how, and how open they are and, and what it does to the schedule. And, you know, having all these new rules and regulations or, or these new uh, you know, possibilities without the rules and regulations. It's just, um, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. I mean, it, it's just, um, it's wild that this is the trend of college sports and you can see the power that is, you know, really trying to figure it out. I mean, it, it is rare to hear Greg Sankey publicly, you know, kind of, say we we don't know right now you know i mean it's it, it's it's at a point where you know they're trying to figure it out because they just don't have a lot of power you know they just don't have a a, a lot of power and and this is this is something that um brian kelly said to the sec network and paul feinbaum earlier this week when he said that he did support federal legislation to curb uh you know unequal NIL practices. He said, I think what happened here is unintended consequences. Everybody saw NIL and felt like if I don't act in my own state, I could be left behind. So we had legislation in different states that really put everybody in a position within the footprint of the SEC at a different advantage point. And that's not what the SEC needs nor wants. And so how do you bring everybody back together? Well, you need Congress for that. And I think you got to go individually to your own congressional, uh, congressional legislative team and really talk about it. If we want national competition and we want to be the preeminent conference, we've got to put the genie back into the bottle. I mean, <laughs> like, that ain't happening, right? Like, I mean, you would think that that's just going to be nearly impossible to do at, at, at the stage of, of where they're at. And, you know, I, I, I'm not here 
to to offer up this 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 truly valuable solution because you know you can see the confusion on on everybody's face but it, there do there, there does have to be some type of commitment to figuring this out at the level where somebody this is their their full-time gig like i can't expect you know greg sankey to sit down and outline and 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 define what nil's rules and governing principles are going to be i mean that, that's impossible he's got to be dealing with you know so many other things there has to be a group of people that just say hey look this is our responsibility like somebody's got to put us in in into position that says look there's the body that's going to come up with the the language of how this thing operates because until then it's so wouldn't that just be another version of the NCAA? Isn't that what you were trying to get away from? If you start putting, I mean, I guess there needs to be some sort of well, I mean, yeah, way to, to you I, know, I, I, I was never saying it. getting away from the NCAA. I was urging the NCAA to step up to, to, I mean, like there was, it's just mind blowing and it's obvious how much money they were making and just, you know, thieving from the public and from these 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 athletes and from these people that they were just yeah you know, they're taking money off their sweat and, and and not offering any type of of resolution to saying hey we need to share this i mean like this is this is a lot a lot of money i mean like we we could probably share it with these people and, and nobody stepped up within that organization to say hey look the the, the road is going to run out on us this is going to become a dead end here pretty quick. And when it does, what are we going to do? And it looked like Mark Emmerich just said, who cares? We're just going to, until the, the road dies, we're, we're, just, we're just driving on it. But I would expect now somebody within that organization to say, hey, look, we're dead. We're, 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 we, we got no power. Nobody respects us. Nobody listens to us. If we want to make a move here, maybe we should just take this fight on. I don't want them in charge of that. I, I don't I, want them in charge of anything. I, mean, I, don't, that's, I, don't, I don't know who's trustable within this industry. Right. Right. I, I don't know where the good administrators are. I don't know where good, you know, um, you know, where, where, where the good business minded people within the NCAA are. Everything that I've ever read, felt, seen about them just feels very grimy, toxic. You know, I mean, feels very slimy, feels very dirty. Um, and that's that's where I'm at. I understand, I guess. Here's my, my question is, the reason that all these coaches are somewhat like pseudo complaining about this, it's because they've all lost recruits that they thought they had at some point because of NIL, right? So they're trying to find a way to govern it where they're like, oh, it happened. this is happening to us because of NIL. And so they all have certain reasons to bitch because it's hurt them or helped them in a certain way, right? So they're trying, coaches at the ultimate, like at the end of the day, they want control. And right now they have no control, it feels like, over NIL, over certain players and I guess the construction of their team to an extent. So is that why they're arguing on behalf of this needs some sort of regulation because they have no idea how recruits are getting away from them and to some extent to where it's, we had them in the bag until the, up until the stroke of midnight. And now I have no how, way to know what happened. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's turned into, like we said yesterday, it's free agency. It's highest bidder. It's pay for play. I mean, it's it's everything it was intended that it was not, but so predictable of what it was going to become because there was no leadership. But what's wrong with that? I mean, that it's it, college football has already been the haves and have-nots. This is just putting it out in the open. It's basically, you want to compare it to the NFL, it's not that. Right now it's Major League Baseball. I, I've got no problem with that. I just, I hate that there's different state laws for it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that the league should hopefully try and take that over and say, look, this is how it's going to be. Go I mean, it would have to be the league's the, 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 the league's um, participants saying, hey, look, we're voting to take it out of the state's hands. We're giving it to the SEC. And everybody plays under the to same. To define what it is. And I mean, I got no problem with Jaden Daniels getting an NIL deal away from whatever is, you know, his, his value of playing in the SEC is. Right, whether the SEC says, "Hey, you're in a tier list, and if you you accomplish this, if you get all SEC, all American, you get you know you get this stipend." A freshman doesn't matter if you're Harold Perkins, and it doesn't matter if you're the you know the the 25th signee. This is what you're getting, right? And at this level, if you're a starter, if you're a 
you know, maybe that's how you tear it. I, I got no idea. I can't be the guy that's, you know, that, that people right. are looking at and saying, but I got to imagine somewhere somebody saying, let's be the people on this. Let, let's, let's do this. Right. All right. We got to get to our guy, Jack Karavich, who is up in Richmond, Virginia, incredible product that has been introduced down here in Baton Rouge over the last couple of years. It looks like now it's going, uh, it's going into production and going to be on the field. Uh, it's Tiger Air. The company is named Tiger Air. Uh, as we said, and they're all over spo- uh, social media. You can find them at TigerAir.com. That is T-I-G-E-R-A-I-R-E.com, TigerAir.com. And Jason Karavich is up in uh, Virginia this morning, and we saw the social media everywhere. I want to bring him in here. Shout out to our friend Daryl Owens. Oh, he's not there yet? All right, we're going to take a break, and he'll be right back. Uh, he will be with us uh, coming up here on the Jordy Collada Show, built by r Donaldsonville Glass and Body, the trusted name in frame, body, and automotive paint repair since 1977. They have served their customers for over 45 years. You can find them online at dgbauto.com or stop in and see them Railroad Avenue and Division Street out in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Look, they can help you with your insurance claims. They can make the repair process as stress-free as possible. I'm speaking from experience here. I've got numerous windshields, body repair, all done by Kenny and the crew over at Donaldsonville Glass and Body. They are, without question, the most well-equipped shop in the area. Stop in and see them today. Shop them online, dgbauto.com, or stop in and see the crew over in Division Street in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Donaldsonville Glass and Body. Hey, fellas, it's Jordy Collada for my friends over at Men's Total Health. Guys, do you suffer from fatigue, decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, weight gain or loss, loss of muscle mass, signs of depression, anxiety, hair loss, mental fog, general loss of interest, then you might be suffering from low testosterone. Go see my friend Mike Roach and his great team over at Men's Total Health over in Metairie at menstotalhealth.net online and stop in and see how they can change your life today. A simple shot and some knowledge from Mike Roach can get you back up, moving with your energy, get your sex drive back, build your muscle mass, make you feel young again. All online, menstotalhealth.net. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each experienced our own versions of life, but in the end, we're all on the same team. I'm part of that team, along with these players in purple and gold. Kayshawn Buddha, Malik Neighbors, Miles Frazier, Kyron Lacey, Greg Brooks. Whether on the field or in the courtroom, your team matters. So join our team. Make a difference. Bet. Let's get it done. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225 485 8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. All right, welcome back here. Jordy Collada Show is always built by our friends over at RMB Builders, Red Bourgeois and the crew. Make sure and find them on Instagram, RMB Builders. Uh, cool stuff on social media yesterday. As uh, you saw it, uh, I don't know if you saw it, you keep up with LSU football. I'm sure uh, a lot of you who listen to this show are uh, following LSU football on uh, social media. And you saw uh, Zach Nagy 
uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the um, uh, pers- one of the people who covers LSU uh, was tweeting out something with a new LSU football helmet that a couple of the players were trying on uh, that has some technology in it that it provides an air condition as uh, as, as LSU is going through their. Uh, going through their, their their games, their practices, all of this. Mac Markway, one of the tight end, Makai Wingo, uh, were, were some of the players that were giving reviews on this. And uh, it's cool, man. I, in fact, we've seen this uh, the last couple of years. I, I remember Derek Stingley trying one on a couple of years ago uh, when he was a freshman. Jack Karavich, uh, who is uh, behind this product, got a great relationship with LSU. G String and the boys down there in the equipment room. Um, is joining us now live here on the show to talk a little bit more about it. Uh, Jack, good morning. How are you, man? Hey, Jordy. Good, man. How are you doing? Doing good. Uh, we kept up with the social media yesterday, and as I, I was talking a little bit about it before you came on, I, I remember this being introduced a few years ago. Some mutual friends that we have, Daryl Owens, while, while we were on the radio yep. with ESPN Radio, called me about it, and I, I remember it might have been even like the 2019 season, Stingley's freshman year. Um, no, yeah, coming out of coming out of 2019 into 2020, you're right. That's right. So, so obviously, um, what's the news now? I mean, this is this has been in production, and what was yesterday's announcement? Well, I mean, honestly, the I mean, so back then it was you know right when it started out, it was old computer parts and you know tube and duct tape from Lowe's. Um, that was real early prototyping, just uh, you know trying to figure out you know do we have an idea that might actually be valuable that might help the players and um you know we just we immediately saw just a lot of that kind of you know inherent viral lift when we talked to the guys that put it on and they get all excited about it we still have one of the uh i think the original first day on our TikTok when we first went into lsu with that you know that duct tape piece of garbage we were just building in the garage and everyone got lit up about it they got so excited um but i mean that's you know that's not a product company yet that's not a real company right um about two and a half years of work gritting and grinding uh, working with uh, with Greg, with G-String, with LSU, uh, getting connected with other partners in the SEC uh, at Alabama, at Texas A&M. Um, just a lot of support from the community, from the folks that are out there. And uh, we had our, uh, our our soft kind of pilot launch last uh, last August. Uh, we were hoping it was going to be last May, but um, you know, just you know, startup woes, you know, delays mm-hmm. in, in manufacturing. We're making them out of China now. Um, you know, that's just because that's volume. Like you can't build electronics fast enough here. Um, and uh, so we moved over there and, you know, we had a lot of delays. Everyone was dealing with microchip delays. So, you know, hope in May, then June, then July, finally got it August, um, got it out there with some of the kids, had to make some tweaks to the experience. You know, we saw the tubes were kinking a little too much. They weren't getting good airflow and blah, 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 blah. So a long right. list of just, you know, being a startup and grinding away and just not quitting and um you know we work with some great partners down there like red zone who works with a lot of the schools and you know they just you know they they stuck with it with us down in the in the mud working with these kids trying to figure out like how's this experience going to be the best and i feel like where we landed now the you know the the modifications enhancements we've made um you know that's that's it's just a testament to you know all the support uh down in south louisiana across the sec that we've gotten uh you know really started day one it was me and and G string and Jack Marucci just in the mad laboratory, just, you know, talking about like, well, what, what if we did this? What if we did that? And, um, can't believe we got to this point. It's actually, it's surreal. Yeah. Joel Davis and his crew at red zone brought a, a yep. prototype through here one morning talking about it specifically. And we all awesome. tried it on. We all put the helmet on and it is, yeah. it's amazing, Jack. I mean, like I, I, yeah. I think everybody's got to be skeptical, right? I mean, when you introduce it, you're like, oh, hang sure. on, you're putting an AC on my head in a helmet. Yep. How does this operate? Take me through the innovation. Take me through the technology. Yeah. Well, so I got one over here um, that I just actually pulled out of an Alabama helmet. So I won't put that over yeah, here on the gross, screen. Gross, so, gross. Okay. Don't put it back in. Not, yeah, keep right. that off the screen. But I got one right here. Uh, oh. I'll just keep that. that yeah, you're you're in a perfect screen. headshot because you got Saints and LSU helmets. So you're perfect. <laughs> that's right. That's right. The, uh, um, so we got over here. We got a unit. I'll just hold it up here for you all to see. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a small battery pack with a trigger button here on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that button on the bottom. Uh, yep. This battery is probably low, but you got some LED indicator lights. There we go. One's on. It's blinking low battery right now. But uh, we got a blower unit, custom designed to that blower unit. It's it's a uh, uh, certain kind of like volute spiral sort of technology and how the air gets moved and accelerated through it. 
Um, it allows you to use just a very, you know, soft, uh, uh, plastic, uh, safe kind of motor mm -hmm. that you'd find in like a 3D printer or, or a computer to cool it off. Uh, moves at a really high RPM, won't suck in your hair, um, very lightweight, and uh, takes that air, recirculates the air like you turn on the ceiling fan yeah. in the winter, on the reverse, and it starts pulling that air out, you know, actively removing the air from the inside of the cavity of the helmet, which, you know, you got, you got ventilation in the helmets, but, you know, it's primarily decorative, right? I mean, you see like a bicycle helmet, it's almost like Swiss cheese, all the holes. Right. But if you ride around a bicycle helmet in the heat for 30 minutes, you know, your head's drenched in sweat. So it's actively moving that air out, bringing that temperature down because the, you know, the body of this is insulated. So it brings that temperature of the air down a little bit, then cascades it over the face for the player. You can, you know, situate it a bunch of different ways. You know, you got for the tube right here, it's all removable. So you got the tube and the coupler right here. Uh -huh. So that tube comes in three different lengths in the middle. And then you got three different types of outlets. There's a 90 degree, a 70 degree, and a 50. So guys that might want to have that air up on their forehead and blowing it across the forehead so they're doing less of this during the game, uh -huh. right? You know, you might take the short tube and the 90 degree. Um, I remember when we were starting out before Jamar opted out for that season, you know, he had liked having it down by his nose and mouth. He felt like he could get his breath back quicker, felt like he was, it was easier to breathe. It, you know, when that air is stagnant and it's sitting in there in that heat and that humidity and you're breathing, it feels like it's like labored breathing and you just start to like disrupt the air and make it a little more turbulent, like a breeze, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can breathe, I can breathe a little bit easier. So mm -hmm. it depends on the player's preference where they want it. Uh, we got some new add-ons for how the air is going to flow that we're hoping to release later this season, but um, runs for five hours. It's water resistant. Uh, it's made out of polycarbonate plastic, uh, one of the strongest plastics on earth. We got a soft touch silicone finish on it. Everything's very soft. We got a non kink tube now. So any of y'all who got that old tube out there that was kinking, reach out to Red Zone or hit us up. We'll get you that new tube, non-kinking tube, similar to what you find at Lowe's. You know, if you're making, you know, some sort of project at home, you want that non-kink tube. Outlets, the cool thing about this one, it used to be a fixed tube. Outlets removable now. So you got the coupler right there that goes on one end. And then you got the outlet over here on the other end that you can pull out. And you can switch it all out. So you got all the parts that are a little bit more exchangeable and feels like a lot of the guys, the kids, the coaches, the parents, they like having that ability to pick and choose where that airflow is so you know just working on modifications and fixing things and making it the best product we put a little mud flap over here over the charging port it's got a little custom magnetic charging port you can see there you know it starts to fill up a lot of sweat and dirt when the guys are playing so we put a little mud flap on there that was another g-string innovation but um you know that comes from working with you know with guys that are mm -hmm. you know, in the equipment industry have been in it for 20 30 years and understand the equipment understand the players better than we ever will you see the website, TigerAir.com. Make sure you put the E on the end of air, TigerAir.com, when looking up the product. So I'm a parent of a young player. He's a seventh grader, uh, plays in South Louisiana. Obviously, he's dealing with the same heat conditions that you know the Saints and the LSU players are. If I'm a, a parent and I want to buy this, can I just go to TigerAir.com, buy one, and then install it on my son's helmet? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, uh, you know, works with the Speedflex and the F7, the VTD2 version of the F7, which is, you know, by our estimations, about 85% of the market still today. Um, you know, there are other helmets that are out there that just have different configurations inside that we just simply can't fit it in, you know, natively. Um, but uh, it'll fit inside, uh, you know, any of those helmets, uh, medium, large, extra large. Um, we have uh, install videos that we've just been posting on TikTok. You know, an unboxing to, you know, let folks see what comes inside the box. What exactly is this? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of guys ask, is this Freon? Is there a refrigerant? <laughs> is there a real air conditioner? And, and I got to be honest, man, <laughs> it's a fair question. Is this a it's window a unit? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like early on, we were, we were being real specific, like real scientific about what we called it. And literally every kid would be like, yo, that's a helmet air conditioner. And we're like, finally, we just hit a point where we're like, all right, man, it's a helmet air conditioner. Let's do it, it man. Call yeah, it. right. Real technical name anymore. So wait, Tiger <laughs> Air, it, 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 is it, I know the LSU relationship was very early here. Is this yeah. where that originates? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, honestly, it was, it was a flurry. You know, uh, G-String and Jack and I, you know, we met up and, um, you know, we saw, we saw an opportunity early on to, to help the guys out and, build a business around it, man. We got excited mm -hmm. about that. And, you know, then it was just like, move fast, move fast. And, you know, we went out there real quick. I always tell everyone, people be like, oh man, some folks be like, oh man, you got a dope logo. I love that logo. You're like, man, we got it from a kid in India on Fiverr for like $32. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
this was not like sit down and like customize a logo for six months. So we did that. And, and, uh, you know, and then on top of that, you know, when we were starting it out, it was, um, you know, it, it, I mean, for us, it was all about, you know, getting, getting it out there, getting the company recognized, getting some, you know, some of the basics in place so we could partner with the university, having a corporation is important, you know, and, uh, um, you know, the name for us were like, you know, Gatorade came out of university of Florida, uh-huh. right? Like, I mean, t- we got some air coming out of, you know, those LSU Tigers. Like, we call it Tiger Air. They call it Gatorade. So right. so that's that's what we went with. And we patented the technology in partnership with LSU, donated those patents to LSU. I always say donated. The reality is we partnered. LSU filed them for us. But, um, but it's because of that type of partnership we've had. We have exclusivity on the life of those patents. We donate back with all our sales to the university. We even add in provisions to... You know, once we have a liquidity event as a business, we sell, we go public one day, God willing, we uh, we donate a big undiluted portion of this business back to the university. Wow. I mean, we wouldn't be here without that LSU partnership, no doubt about it. Uh, and the SEC and all the doors they opened up uh, all started right there in Baton Rouge, man, right there at the equipment center, football uh, training center right there in Baton Rouge. G string, as good as they make them, man. Um, Jack, so, so Gatorade's on every sideline of every game we ever see, right? Do you envision yeah, that yeah. this is in every helmet that that football produces? I mean, do you are you in are you conversation with Rydell and and, and these these helmet yeah, manufacturers? You know, we, yeah, you know we've had conversations with folks. Look at it, phone uh, ringing, podcast, baby. We're phone. making the phone ring already. <laughs> yeah, the phone's ringing already, man. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, you know, just you know, meeting with all the folks from you know from Rydell, from Shuck, from mm-hmm. you know Vices, Zenith. Uh, um, light helmets, you know, we're, we're talking with all the guys because at the end of the day, listen, like, you know, and, and I tell everyone, you know, the helmet business, the, there's a lot of protective com- competition around who can make the most protective helmet. And that is key. That is number one. That's the most important thing is protecting that head. But, you know, there, there's a lot of other there's a lot of other challenges that come with wearing heavy duty equipment. And you see it with, you know, other products that we're releasing. We got an add on for hard hats. Uh, you know, we've been working on stuff for baseball and softball that we've been in the laboratory working on. And other products where you know you wear a helmet man i mean it's it's uh it's exhausting man whether you're playing sports or you do it for a job so um you know it it, it increases your chances of heat related illness and injury i mean the whole nine yards everyone knows what happens you know you start you start sweating you can't you can't get that sweat off your body and your body temperature starts rising so you know what whether or not it's going to have the 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 sort of medical relief that we might hope it is and we do research on that now you know, out of the box, though, it's it's a comfort thing. Immediately, guys mm-hmm. put it on. They're like, "Man, I'm I'm so much more comfortable with this on." Yeah, you so, saw it yesterday. You know, that's really the best. I mean, the, the, that? the real time reaction of Mac Markway and Makai Wingo. I mean, you could tell it wasn't you that wasn't sta- that. that wasn't staged, right? I mean, it wasn't yeah. fake. I mean, like they were like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, so, <laughs> it, it, so I, we started we started we started meeting with the players obviously from day one, and it wasn't until last week. And you know, sometimes we're kind of dopey and we don't pick up on stuff that fast, but. We were like, man, these guys, every time they put it on, they're so lit. They're so excited. <laughs> right. They were like, why are we not posting this shit on social media? <laughs> right. I'm telling you. Call Fiverr. Some stuff were real stupid, man. And it was like last week we started, and each one's been hitting and hitting. And then obviously that LSU one, it, it took off. And we got ESPN and Bleach Report and everyone reaching out. Hey, can we use this? Can we use this? So, um, yeah, I mean, it's sometimes we're, we're real smart and sometimes you know, we're not the sharpest tools in the that's shed. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's one of, one of the drawbacks of having G-String on the team, too. I, I get it. I get it. Uh, but I, I said this. The first time I put it on, and I put it on right yeah. here in the studio when Joel Davis brought it by yeah. from Red Zone, it's like the first time you sit down in an air-conditioned seat in a car. Like, and you feel yeah. like the air condition, yeah. like, kind of like hit your back, kind of like hit your ass. Yeah. You, know, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're like, like oh breeze. my God, yeah. like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. tigerair.com, and make sure you put the E on yes, the end sir. of the, uh, the dot com. Uh, Jack, this is cool, man. And like we said, we've kind of seen it around Baton Rouge for the last couple of years. And now for this thing to be taken off, it, it, it is fun to watch. And you got a lot of great people around you. So um, hopefully we can do this again. Thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate you, Jordy. Thanks, everyone. You got it, man. There he is, Jack Karavich, checking in this morning from Virginia. What a product, man. Uh, Like I said, I remember um, going into LSU football ops, and it was. It was after 19 going into 20. It was Stingley's sophomore season, and Stingley was in the equipment room, and they were trying this, like, early prototype on him, and he was giving them, like, like real time feedback and Jack was in that room and Jack Marucci was in that room and Greg Stringfellow was in that room and Louis Bourgeois and you know all the guys from the equipment room Eric Cookmeyer and the crew I mean they were all kind of like sitting there 
like, you know, kind of like taking notes from Stingley on, you know, what's it feel like? Is it heavy? Does it, you know, what, and Stingley's got this, you know, like head of hair that when he puts on a football helmet, I mean, like it's, you know, it doesn't have a lot of place to go. So, I mean, it, it, was, a, it was a good, you know, really kind of test case for them to sit and watch this. And I remember sitting there thinking, and Daryl Owens, I appreciate Daryl, who is a, uh, a great friend who, who helped us put that, that interview together. I believe he was in that room with us to that morning. And, and again, still kind of being kind of skeptical of like, mm -hmm. how are you going to put a, how are you going to put a, a, you know, like a, a fan blowing in a helmet with all that hair? Like I was thinking like, it's something's going to like, something's going to happen. Right. And, you know, it was one of the things that they had talked out and now here they are. You know, what is this, three, four years later where, I mean. It's real. They found it. They, they, they've got it, you know, where, you know, I, I, my son is a football player. I asked him directly, could I go online, order the product, and install it myself? Absolutely. There's a YouTube and a, and a TikTok that you can reference to, to get that knowledge. So I, I appreciate him coming on here and uh, giving an explanation on that um, to see the uh to see what was uh it feels like such a wild idea yeah like, it does like it seems like something that you couldn't really like you could think of it it'd be like it'd be nice to have this but it actually going into production just blows my mind it feels like it did there's so many moving yeah. parts right. to it that feel An like AC in a football yeah home. like player safety and all these different regulations and like getting sponsored with Rydell whatever like, all of these loopholes you would have to jump through and credit to them for getting it moving this quickly and obviously when you have a guy like Marucci on your team, yeah. it feels like anything's possible. Uh, Grady, Jordy says G-string to someone who doesn't have any clue who G-string is. I beg your pardon? Excuse me? I think he's uh, talking about Jack, the Burrow Jack interview. Jack Kervich. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. G-string is Greg Stringfellow, for anybody that does not know. The longtime equipment ma He was the equipment manager for a long time. He has since been elevated into a uh, an athletics director role, an associate athletics director role. Um, but... Uh, doing cool stuff like this. I can't wait to see you buy this and have to install it. You're going to be uh, on the phone no so way. fast. No, 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 I'm taking this. I'm <laughs> Straight taking to it. drink. I'm taking it right to G-String. <laughs> I have no a chance. I mean, like, I bought the I bought a visor last year for him and took it straight to, <laughs> to Cookmeyer and the crew. I don't put this in. Um, <laughs> so we appreciate it now being at the U. <laughs> they thought they got rid of me. <laughs> you started bringing them. I, mean, like, I, need, I need practice pants, boys. <laughs> you got a size extra small. Yeah, yeah, we like, get some gloves. <laughs> I mean, it's size eight and a half in those cleats, coach. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we promoted that. We took a promoted Tiger Air. Yeah, what do you want from us? What do you want from us? You <laughs> should be playing in front of tens of people. Uh, yeah, cleats, Chris Blair. <laughs> Chris Blair coming up here, 815. We'll talk to Blair. Remember, Daily, we're brought to you by Katie's Restaurant. Our friends down at Katie's, get over there and see them. I told you the, uh, the, the, the story from the weekend, man. And Scott Craig and his crew, we sent over the, uh, the clip to him. And he actually played that clip at his manager's meeting yesterday. Um, inside of, of Katie's to kind of show that, you know, it always matters, man. You never know what's going to happen, right? Like if you're in the service industry, you just never know. I mean, you could be having a bad day. You could be going through some stuff that nobody knows about. But then you go talk to two tourists from San Diego and they, you know, sit down with a local and they tell about their experience at Katie's and come to find out that local's tied to Katie's and it gets back to the, the restaurant. It's just a you know, it's, it's good feedback from the streets. It's good feedback from people that experience Katie's. And no matter how you experience, whether you're a local, whether you're a tourist, whether you're someone who's not been there, Katie's is a place for you, man. They've got great menu items to choose from. It's a great spot to go sit at the bar and watch the game. It's a great spot to go sit at the bar and meet a new friend. It's a great spot. Katie's in midcity.com. They're located over there on Iberville street. They've been around since 1984 with great experience. It's 3701 Iberville street. Go see Scott Craig and our friends down there, man. Friendly service. Just like the tourists told us on Saturday, man. I asked him directly, what was the best part about your meal at Katie's? And she said, look, it was all fantastic. The food, she said they had ordered, you know, like something from every spot of the menu. Like they ordered a couple of appetizers, a couple of uh, dishes, a couple of desserts, a couple of, you know, just kind of did the deal. And they also said that they sat for about 45 minutes to an hour after they were finished just to people watch and continue to interact with the friendly people over at Katie's. It's what I've been telling you about since my first experience there. 
It, it is, it's genuine, man. You, you get that every time. Katie's in midcity.com. Katie's in midcity.com. Been around since 84. They're at 3701 Iberville Street. Make sure and tell them you heard it here on the Jordy Collada Show. Hour two of the show next, built by RMB Builders. Come back with us. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done. Are you looking for sound financial advice? Then get in touch with Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. You can call him today at 225-261-8262 or email him daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. If you're planning for retirement, saving for college, for children or grandchildren, or just looking for sound investment opportunities, get in touch with Daniel today, 225-261-8262. Located on Magnolia Square Drive in Central, Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. Don't let the name fool you. Men's Total Health has offerings for the ladies too. Guys, is your wife or partner suffering from urinary incontinence, low sexual desire or pain during sex? Then the O-Shot might be for her. Don't let it scare you. It's totally natural. It's PRP and Mike Roach and the crew at Men's Total Health will make you as comfortable as you can be. Contact me for more information, katie at jordycoladashow.com and I'm happy to tell you everything that Men's Total Health has to offer for the ladies. Hey Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. Donaldsonville Glass and Body, the trusted name in frame, body, and automotive paint repair since 1977. They have served their customers for over 45 years. You can find them online at dgbauto.com or stop in and see them Railroad Avenue and Division Street out in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Look, they can help you with your insurance claims. They can make the repair process as stress-free as possible. I'm speaking from experience here. I've got numerous windshields, body repair, all done by Kenny and the crew over at Donaldsonville Glass and Body. They are, without question, the most well-equipped shop in the area. Stop in and see them today. Shop them online, dgbauto.com, or stop in and see the crew over over in Division Street in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Donaldsonville Glass and Bottle. Hey, fellas, it's Jordy Collada for my friends over at Men's Total Health. Guys, do you suffer from fatigue, decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, weight gain or loss, loss of muscle mass, signs of depression, anxiety, hair loss, mental fog, general loss of interest, then you might be suffering from low testosterone. Go see my friend Mike Roach and his great team over at Men's Total Health over in Metairie at menstotalhealth.net online and stop in and see how they can change your life today. A simple shot and some knowledge from Mike Roach can get you back up, moving with your energy, get your sex drive back, build your muscle mass, make you feel young again. All online, menstotalhealth.net.
Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each experienced our own versions of life, but in the end, we're all on the same team. I'm part of that team, along with these players in purple and gold. Kayshawn Buddha, Malik Neighbors, Miles Frazier, Kyra Lacey, Greg Brooks. Whether on the field or in the courtroom, your team matters. So join our team. Make a difference. Bet. Let's get it done. The Journey Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225 485 8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. All right, welcome back here. Jordy Colada Show, driven and empowered, as always, built by our friends over at RMB Builders. Remember, our phone line brought to you by Metropolitan Health Group. Real doctors, real solutions. Jason Ramazan and Charlie Harvey. Uh, you got that uh, You got that video of Kayshawn? Mm-hmm. Bring that up. Uh, Kayshawn Booty, who was a sixth-round pick to the New England Patriots, of course, slid in the NFL draft. Uh a lot more than uh, uh, I guarantee you he figured he would have and a lot of people around him. Uh, but his pre-draft process was, uh, it was not good, right? I mean, from... Uh, Maybe the worst ever. After the bowl, up until the draft. I don't know if we've seen a slide like that that's comparable. Um, really, at least here from, from LSU. Um, someone who was projected to be a high-round draft pick and a, really a, a, you know, a premier-type player go through the type of struggles and setback that Booty did uh, during his, his junior season uh, and then ultimately leaving for the NFL, saying he was coming back, had to leave, uh, or didn't have to leave, but decided to leave. Um, and, um, you know, just slid to a six-round pick. This came out yesterday. 82 is making the team. Of Kayshawn in New England. And Ooh. now that's going against Ayer. And there's nobody there. There's no defensive backs on him. There's a coach garden. But I'm just looking at the physical traits there. Like, that shot of him right there looks a lot better than what I saw at Pro Day. Like, just the physical side profile of him. And without sounding like a total weirdo, I mean, it just looks like he's in shape. I mean, it just looks like he has really, like, taken the last couple of weeks and months as serious as you've hoped he would do the whole thing. Um... And, you know, getting it right. Now, from an attitude standpoint, if Bill Belichick and his staff can't get him, you know, motivated after the the doubt he has heard the last couple of months, well, then I would tell you that, you know, Kayshawn's in the wrong industry. I, it, if you can't find, I mean, we've all sit and, you know, we've all watched The Last Dance, right? I mean, we've seen the best of all time in the way that he used slights to motivate him there's no one that has been slighted more in the draft process over the last year maybe in college football than Kayshawn Booty I'm talking about like just think about where your expectations were here were for him last year around this time when you know the momentum started to sway that he was coming back he wanted to wear number seven it was you know I mean it was you you were feeling like okay 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 this could this could all kind of be good vibes for for Kayshawn and LSU, and it just didn't it, it didn't it didn't work out like that. I, I don't think. I, I I I in fact I know he's not a fifth he's not a sixth round pick, right? I mean we all know that his attitude needed adjusting, mentally he needed a shake up, and if the New England Patriots can't provide that as a late round draft pick. 
you know, I, 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 I don't know what's next for Kayshawn if that ain't it. That's what he needs to realize, right? Is what, what, do you, what else are you going to do? That you put your whole life into football, and now when you get to the – that's what the most frustrating part is. Right when you get to the finish line, you, you've essentially fumbled a bag. Like, he was – he did all of the things that you were supposed to do to be able to be, a, like, a high-round pick, get paid, do all the things that you meant to work on, and then whenever he gets to the point of no return, essentially, like, this is going to be your career, it seems like he almost gave up on the game. Uh, bada bing, bada boom says number 58 is a death sentence for a wide receiver trying to make a team. Uh, it could be, but it could also that's, be, hey, man, earn your spot. That's just a Patriots thing. That's, yeah, Bill yeah, Belichick does do that, that to everybody. Every I think they did it to Mac Jones. Yeah, they, yeah. Did, it to, they did it to all their rookies. They, they just give them a random number and make them earn You're it. You're nothing but a number. Um, so Got another video of Kayshawn looking. I mean, coach. That looks better than his pro day route. I mean, those feet look pretty quick. Pretty quick. I guess he's going to make the team. He's going to play a ton in the preseason, that's for sure. For sure. <laughs> oh, good. I mean, Jesus. It's made for him. <laughs> Six <laughs> rounders. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's going to be audition season every game. He might go off in a couple. Yeah. Because he's going to be, what, who was it for um, uh, Cruz? With Victor the, Cruz. Victor Cruz. With the Giants. With, with the Giants. Oh, Whenever also, he goes off in the preseason, like, I we got a player here, right. boys. I don't know who this is. <laughs> right? Who? Uh, oh, they were playing Rex. Uh, Rex Ryan. The, the Jets. And, the Jets. Yeah, they they uh, they shook hands in the middle of the field. Whoever the I think the Giants. Whoever the Giants head coach was like, who the fuck is three? He's like, you got yourselves a player. And he was like, oh yeah, I think Tom we Kaufman. found. Yeah, he's like, I think we found out too. I mean, that's the kind of thing that you could do in the preseason. I know Victor Cruz, Kayshawn obviously comes with more clout than that, but that's the kind of impact you can have in those late, like those preseason games. You know. Obviously, there's not as many, but if you get that many reps and you explode for 150 yards and two touchdowns, at some point you become too good to ignore. Right. And that's what Kayshawn needs, at least to show that he's willing to play in those games, A, and B, that he can, that he's going to be the most dominant player in those games when it's surrounded by late-round talent. Speaking of dominant players, LSU is going to need Denver Harris to be dominant after he transferred mm. in, in the offseason. 247 put out their transfer portal rankings officially uh, earlier this week as they were updated yesterday. And Denver Harris comes in at second on the list as far as transfers picked up by schools this offseason. Travis Hunter was the number one player who transferred from Jackson State to Colorado. Um, some other guys on the list uh, include uh, Alabama uh, it, it linebacker uh, Javion Cohen, who transferred to Miami, Bear Alexander, the big defensive tackle from Georgia, who transferred uh, from the Bulldogs to uh, South Carolina, uh, Keon Coleman, the big wide receiver from Michigan State, Louisiana native that transferred from Michigan State down to Florida State. Those are all guys within the top 15. Uh, but Denver Harris was second on the list as uh, he transferred over from A&M. Now, look, this is a, this is a big time in football transfer rankings as far as just – Total go. Colorado came in first and LSU came second. Um, but Harris, uh, who had, you know, maybe not the spring uh, that he would have hoped for. He was a little banged up uh, and missed some time. And then, uh, you know, he's still kind of catching on to, to what, uh, you know, Robert Steeples and, and, and Matt House really want from him in that defensive backfield and understanding the scheme and how he's going to play. I think once he, he, he will get his footing underneath him, um, you know, he's going to be one of LSU's dominant cornerbacks. He's going to be a starter. I think opening day starters at cornerback, if I was to call it right now, I would say Denver Harris and LaTerrence Welsh uh, are, are the two guys that you'll probably see playing on the outside. I know that they love Denver Harris's talent, right? I mean, as far as just kind of rolling the ball out there and watching him, you know, go through the vitals, go through the, the, the pro day workout. I mean, he is – he's spectacular. You know, you just want him to – catch on to, uh, you know, the new stuff, right? You know, playing in a new system, uh, the new calls, uh, the lingo, you know, just things that, that, that's fresh for him that, you know, may have had him, you know, a half a step, a step behind um, in spring. So, uh, but big news that, you know, it, look, Harris is a big, big, big pickup, a uh, huge pickup uh, for, uh, for LSU. And, it, you know, not only a huge position of need, uh, but to pick up a player of of his caliber at that spot, man, was uh, you know just enormous. Uh, so 
Um, 247 put out their transfer portal rankings uh, as far as uh, the players that are to make the impact. And Travis Hunter first, Denver Harris second, Adani Mitchell, who transferred from Georgia to Texas as a wide receiver, uh, is third on the list. Uh, Ernest Hossman, a linebacker from Nebraska to Michigan, and Fentrell Cypress, uh, who transferred to Florida State as a cornerback, are all in the top five. So, Is Aaron Anderson anywhere on that list? Uh, I did not see. Let me see if I can find Aaron. Because shout out to our boy, Anderson. Hunter Fournette. He has been medically cleared for practice. Yes, Aaron Anderson has been medically, uh, medically cleared. Um <laughs> Breaking news on Instagram. That's what you got to love the boards for. On three. Walker Howard, 42nd on the list. Mm. Top 50 transfer recruits. I do not see Aaron Anderson. Show him that. I think he's going to have an impact. Kick him the ball. <laughs> I think he'll have an impact. Show him that. I mean, like, he should be on this list, right? I would imagine. I, let, let, me, let, me, let me do this one more I guess, time. I guess they went off of, like, I guess because he, he didn't the, play last year, he's a little hurt. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. Maybe he's not. But I mean, Walker Howard didn't play last year. He's a quarterback, though. Yeah, yeah quarterback. This is different. Yeah, I would imagine. You would think he would be somewhere just because of the playmaker that he is. Well, but I, I guess mean, nobody got to see anything. We're a little bit closer to it than most. Not only that, I mean, you know, two four seven. What's their background? Recruiting. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> like, high school? I mean, like this guy's only a year away from being the best player in the state of Louisiana coming home. Coach, I don't see him. Yeah, I don't you him. said tell him that. I don't see him. I would oh, send him no. this list. Uh, all right, Chris Blair's coming up. We'll talk to Blair about the LSU baseball regional uh, as uh, Tigers get going tomorrow. Uh, Two o'clock first pitch. Uh, <laughs> no call on the pitcher, so we will uh, we'll see. What's going on over there? I'm laughing at somebody's tweet that Alabama tweeted their first three games, and it's Middle Tennessee, U. UCF, not UCF, S- South Florida. USF. The, the USF Bulls? USF and Chattanooga. And somebody quoted the tweet and said, absolutely brutal schedule for the Tide <laughs> to start the year. I mean, they don't have a, they don't have a marquee game? I, I don't see one They don't here. have, like, the Florida State game? Uh, they don't do that that no, often. I, I want to say they might play Texas this year. They do play Texas at home. They do. Week two. But They play them yeah. in week two. Um, that should be a good game. I guess. Oh, they do play in week two. Yeah, that guy. What if, what if Bama loses to Texas this year? They could. They, I, I think they could too. They could at I mean, Alabama. 6 by, by no means do I do I think that Texas is back. Oh no! I mean, I'm not jumping on the whack, but Texas has got to be a lot more talented yep. than they have been just by their recruiting classes. Yeah. I mean, like that was the, the the issue with Texas is that. I mean, people were saying Texas is back, but then, like, you'd be like, well, not, no, they're not. not really. they, 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 they don't have any players. They, they don't the have any. 50 rated you know, recruiting class. I mean, they're, not, they're no good. They don't have any players. And now, since they, like, started, you know, like, paying the offensive lineman 50K if you show up, they've been recruiting at a high level at the skill positions with Sarkeesian. You know, defensively, it seems like they're improving. They got to be better. Yeah. I mean, like, they got to be, they got to be at least better. I mean, this is a program that has not seen – like, they haven't been – like, they haven't had guys drafted. Yeah. You know, like, that, that is the huge telltale sign of whether or not you're good. Yeah. Right? Like, draft day tells me everything I need. Draft day used to piss me off about LSU and oh. Les Miles because you were like, good Lord. Oh, he's a first-round pick? Good God. Ooh. Daniel Hunter, you had him play with his hand in the dirt. This guy is leading pick. the league in, in sacks. He's a first-round pick. I mean, that's what started you know the way I mean? like, like that, that, get that me to the league. I'm just leaving. Exactly. Just leave I mean, that's why wide years. receivers would come to yeah. LSU. They'd be like, well, they're not going to throw you the ball. Like, who cares? We got, we got pro day. I'm going to go three years and be out of here. Yeah, we got pro day. I mean, we got, we got the combine. As I soon mean, as they – I mean, James Wright <laughs> caught two passes at LSU and played nine years in the league. I'm going to run a 4-4, catch everything. and just, Yeah, just – Yeah, all you got to do is flash two times on tape. And they're like, oh, Texas my God. Texas doesn't have that guy. No. Like, I mean, Texas doesn't have that yeah, guy on Bichon. draft day where you're like, oh, my God. Like, who is that? Yeah, it's just a grossly mismanaged roster. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they have the talent. I mean, if you look at that Texas-Alabama game, obviously it's at Alabama. But when you line it up and look at the – just solely look at the quarterback position. Quinn that, Ewers, Buckner. That, that, might be, that, Ewers. that might be Bryce Young's best game I saw him play. Yeah. Oh, he put the cape on. Mm. Like, if they don't have Bryce Young that day, they get beat. Coach, that 
that last play when he oh, dodges man. the blitz, mm-hmm. kind of shows under him and number one pick just die. Like that's number one pick type yeah. stuff. That's barrel stuff. Um, yeah, right. Just anticipation, mm-hmm. seeing know, it, the athleticism, like the whole, like the whole package was on Sick. display that day. And if you take, if you take Bryce Young off the field, the game's over. I mean, like they, they get they they get run. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, if, and if Quinn Ewers doesn't get hurt, yeah, because it was ugly. At the it, I mean, like, and Ewers Texas looked great. Was, yeah, Texas he looked was great. Punches. So I mean, if you're Texas, you're taking that flight to Tuscaloosa with a ton of confidence. I don't know how it works out for you, but you're at least thinking, hey, like boys, like you had them on the ropes with the number one pick. He's in Charlotte. <laughs> the number <laughs> like one they're pick. playing with Notre Dame scrub. What the number one and the number two pick? Exactly. Will Anderson too? Was oh on the yeah. Side. And well, that's the that's the Will Anderson game where he lost his mind. He just started throwing yeah, people around. Was, yeah, because for were as good as Bryce Young played, that was his. That's Worst as bad game. as Will Anderson's yeah. ever played. I, I've never seen. I mean, he got like two personal fouls. Couldn't mm-hmm. get to the quarterback. Just just frustrated, frustrated. the whole game. Well, everybody was game planning for you now. After mm-hmm. you had how many sacks? Eighteen sacks or something yeah, like that I mean, the year before. I mean, Will, you think you're gonna get one? You're getting one on one off the edge. But that's what's that's the interesting matchup to me. Obviously. If you're Texas, you have to find some talent to replace B. John Robinson because that's where he flashed in that game sure. too. Where you like, oh, they well, have when a Quinn Ewers got hurt. Mm-hmm. You're like, hey, give it to yeah, B. John, give, give it, it to, to B. John. John. But that's that's the that's the matchup in my mind because the last, I guess you could say, seven years, six years for Alabama, they had a quarterback, which is something that you weren't able to say early on. But they've kind of regressed to the mean of what Alabama football is of. This might be an all-time defense that Nick Saban has to roll out for them to win. Well, it might have to be. That's what I'm saying. I think he might be back to that of A.J. McCarron. Oh, I know how to win it. I'm going to slow this thing oh down and grind God. you out. They're on that stretch, the stretch play. Just give him the oh, stretch. Yeah, I'm 10-7. Sure, I'm sure, play action. Yeah, because he can make you play that game <laughs> if he day. puts you in a box. Right. I mean, he, he well, he's got to be able to defend it. He's got to be able to stop the other team from, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. teams are so offensively minded now. Yeah. You know, where, I mean. It would be a classic Nick Saban pivot, though, for him to. If he could win it like that, mm-hmm. he should walk away. You know I mean? Like, he won't. But, I mean, yeah. if he could win it like that in today's age of college football, that would be his. Be that'd be as good as. Magnum Opus. Like, that would be as good as you could do. Because just, I don't, I don't know if. I don't know if the game allows you to do that anymore. The way that like that you recruit, like your defensive players are not built like you've got a bunch of basketball players over there. Right. You know, you got a bunch You're of built to run. lean right. athletes that can play sideline to sideline. Not only that, keep up with high tempo yeah. offenses. You gotta keep them on the field. I mean, it's not like you're running um, you know, what what was Mount what? Mount Cody? Oh yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. That, that guy doesn't exist anymore. Right. You know what I mean like you just you, tapping you, the helmet. You can't play with that. Um, all right, Chris Blair, eight fifteen. We'll talk LSU baseball regionals are set for tomorrow. Blair and the crew will be on the call. We'll ask him about LSU heading into the postseason next year. The Jordy Collada Show, as always, brought to you by our friends over at RMB Builders. Check them out on Instagram, RMB Builders, and online RMB Builders dot com. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done. Are you looking for sound financial advice? Then get in touch with Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. You can call him today at 225-261-8262 or email him daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. If you're planning for retirement, saving for college, for children or grandchildren, or just looking for sound investment opportunities, get in touch with Daniel today, 225-261-8262, located on Magnolia Square Drive in Central. Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. Don't let the name fool you. Men's Total Health has offerings for the ladies too. Guys, is your wife or partner suffering from urinary incontinence, low sexual desire, or pain during sex? Then the O-Shot might be for her. Don't let it scare you. It's totally natural. It's PRP. And Mike Roach and the crew at Men's Total Health 
will make you as comfortable as you can be. Contact me for more information, katie at jordycoladashow.com, and I'm happy to tell you everything that Men's Total Health has to offer for the ladies. Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. All right, welcome back here to a Thursday edition of the Jordy Galata Show. As always, built by our friend Rhett Bourgeois over at RMB Builders. Every Thursday, we talk to the voice, Chris Blair of the LSU Sports Radio Network. He will be on the call tomorrow for game one of the Baton Rouge Regional. First pitch scheduled for 2 p.m., which means that uh, Chris and Doug will be on the air 30 minutes prior to first pitch, 1.30 tomorrow, coming to you live from the box. And uh, we're all kind of waiting in anticipation on who's going to throw. Uh, and uh, I will not put Blair on the spot on who he, he, he's he got the inside information on, and I doubt that Jay Johnson is telling anybody on where he goes, but uh, obviously this is postseason play, and we're we're in it now, man. And yeah. We've been looking forward to it. Good to see you. Yeah, man. Good to be back with you. Um, yeah, it's an exciting time of the year. It's great to be, uh, you know, at home for uh, NCAA Regional. I think Coach Johnson <laughs> – uh, while we were in Hoover, because I pretty much thought the the resume spoke for itself, and it was a matter of going over there and and maybe trying to find some guys to step up. And I think, you know, everybody wants to win games. You didn't want to go one and two in Hoover. I get yeah. that, but I think there were other objectives that this team was looking for, uh, mainly out of the bullpen and and mainly trying to find that third starter. Which again, you hate to be this late in the season doing that, but now's the time to do that. I mean, this is when it really matters. Um, so I did think, Jay, I said, you know, it's been a while since I've been able to do a regional at home and even have a chance to do a super regional that we're not traveling to beautiful Corvallis, Oregon, right. and beautiful Eugene, Eugene, Oregon, which I get is beautiful from, a, you know, looking out at the trees and whatnot, but it's not my cup of tea. Yeah. So it's nice to be home. Um, and, no, he's not giving away, you know, who will be starting. I, I don't mind telling you that part of me thinks that that I go either Thatcher Hurd or, or believe it or not, maybe a little farther out the box, Javen Coleman. Um, and I and, and the reason I say Javen is is I think coming off that injury, just based on the timeline, I, I think he's done. He hadn't done great every time he's been a starter, but I think getting ready for a start might be easier and quote unquote better for him than coming out of the bullpen in a game. Um, so I, those are my two leaders in the clubhouse. Uh, again, no inside knowledge. Yeah. That's very close to the vest with uh, Coach Johnson. Um, so we'll wait and see uh, tomorrow. But but I, I think it. I would feel good going with Thatcher Hurd or Javen Coleman. Stewie brought up Coleman. I I thought Hurd's last two outings have been as good as he's yep. been all year, and it couldn't be at a better moment. And I think that's something that they want to continue to kind of pepper, right? You know, want to continue to grow that confidence for, for more of that towards the, the stretch. I think that's probably why a lot of people feel that Thatcher Hurd would be the guy that would go against Tulane. And I think it's, to your point, exactly why. Because he's pitched very well the last two outings. And one of those objectives I think LSU had last week in Hoover was to find that third starter 
And I think when you look at Thatcher's last couple of outings, he's he's certainly vying for that position. Yeah. And I just thought that between Thatcher Hurd, Nate Ackenhausen, and Riley Cooper, you feel a little bit better uh, about about the pitching situation because I think you know Riley pitched very well. As you said, I thought Thatcher was incredible on a on an early morning on Wednesday against South Carolina. So I think. Again, for me, I'd like to see Javon Coleman because I think he has a chance to pitch better preparing for a start as opposed to coming out of the pen. But I see every reason in the world why you'd go with that to her because right now you, you want to ride the one that's hot. And for a third starter, I think he's the guy. We hadn't talked a lot about Ty Floyd's work over the last couple <laughs> of weeks because, you know, you've been worried about the bullpen and you've been impressed with Paul Skeens. But one of the forgotten guys is Floyd being pretty solid, right? I, I think his – his stock has grown over the last couple of weeks, and just from a confidence standpoint. I've told a lot of people that I am the uh, president of the Ty Floyd fan club because um, I don't think he's gotten enough credit. I think there's been some hard luck games where offensively LSU has not been the LSU that, yeah. that we know they can be and for the most part have been <laughs> this season. Uh, but he's pitched well enough in, in a number of outings. Of course, he's got a record that's impressive. I mean, you just look at his wins and losses. But there are some no decisions um, that that I think you know were were not on him. Yeah. I think he pitched well enough to win games. I think he pitched well enough against Mississippi State. Um, you know, I think he pitched well enough uh, against Georgia. I think you know the Auburn game was going well until the fourth inning. Um, again, you can't take away what happened in that fourth inning. But I think by far, I think with Skeens number one and Floyd number two, if that's your top two starters, Ty Floyd is is certainly uh, has the has the potential to win you some games, not only in a regional, super regional, but also in Omaha. So yeah, no yeah I think I think he's kind of been lost in in some of the because you have Paul Skeens, who yeah. for the most part has been so electric, right. And then if you're not able to win a game two, it's it's like you don't even remember that Ty actually pitched very good in that game and just didn't get the win. So. Um, well, and people forget there's a reason LSU was taking two of three nearly every series early on, bingo. Or like through most of the year, because you'd be so enamored by Skeens, Ty Floyd be ho hum, I guess, you know, gets you to a win, and then the other end of the spectrum was so glaring that they would go Paul Skeens, and then you have nothing. Yes, yeah, like, right. How do you think they won game two? No, I think that's. I think you're exactly right. I think that you know Skeens has been so dominant that anything after that is just not you know li- rising to that level. But you know, baseball people know that. And it's why you bring that up. I mean, I talk to people all the time, and they go, hey, Ty Floyd, I'll take him in a battle. Mm-hmm. Breaking news. LSU right-hander Paul Skeens named Collegiate yep. Baseball National Player of the Year 15 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. LSU righty Skeens named the National Player of the Year by Collegiate Baseball America. He is the third player in LSU history to receive this award, joining uh, Ben McDonald in 1989 and Lloyd Peaver, who won that award uh, in 1992, um, you've seen every pitch Skeens has thrown this season. Um, he's, and people say this now almost kind of uh, definitively, that he's the best that LSU has has. It's, it's so bold, but then you look at the numbers. The and numbers like, don't lie. Man, they don't lie. Um, you know, I, I heard Kyle Peterson, the, you know, over the weekend talking about how, you know, Paul Skeens, is is you know running into numbers that people did not think you would ever see again uh, here at LSU and you know if LSU can continue to win I mean he's still chasing most strikeouts in a season mm-hmm. and you got to go back a ways and I don't mean to you know to age our good buddy Big Ben but I mean it's been a while no since you've even talked about those type of numbers so Doug, he was second on that list yeah yeah I mean <laughs> it's been a minute and it's he's been here not even a full season you right. know so. Uh, yeah, he's incredible, and and uh, certainly deserved that award. I saw it as it was coming down, uh, coming down the street. So again, one of those deals where you're like, "Yep, that makes sense." He is averaging 16.64 strikeouts per nine innings, which is the second highest total in NC D- uh, Division One history. Uh, this season, he has struck out 167 batters and walked 17. As Skeens gets ready for. <laughs> Postseason play. So, Skeen's name, National Player of the Year. Um, offensively, how, how, how do you feel about them going into this part of the year? They've been so great all year long that you feel like they're going to find it, right? Yeah, you do, because the numbers say they will. Exactly. I mean, it's kind of what we were talking about earlier. I mean, you, you see this offense put up 10, 11, 12 runs a game, uh, and you've seen them do it a bunch of times, 
And then when you see them only score four or five, you think, "Uh uh-oh, you know, the world's coming to an end. Um, That's a lot of baseball games. That's a lot of at-bats that they've been able to produce. They've been able to hit with runners in scoring position. And certainly the last couple of weeks you could argue, okay, well, that number has dipped a little bit to where it was early in the season and middle part of the season. Um, I, I just think it, it's too easy to say, well, it's, that's baseball. But that's a high standard to go out and produce that type of hitting, those type of clutch hits and those types of runs every single day. But as Coach Johnson pointed out, you know, uh, on Monday, I mean, it's a team that's done it more times than not. Um, you know, I think they've got to do better. But, you know, I, I, I was talking in Hoover to a couple of guys that cover SEC baseball, and I said, you know, for any team here, whether it's Vanderbilt, whether it's Arkansas, whether it's LSU, these teams that we think have a potential to vie for a national championship, you know, you got to score more than four runs. And, you know, they all looked at me and go, duh. Did you yeah. see that on the cover of Duh Monthly? I mean, <laughs> you can't beat a lot of teams if you only score four runs. So I'm not really concerned about the offense. I'm certainly concerned – that we need to have, you know, everybody at full strength. And, you know, all indications are we will coming up tomorrow when uh, they take on Tulane at 2 o'clock. And the other point that I think Jay Johnson drives home and he is so accurate is there is nobody in this region. I don't know who's going to win. I don't Mm -hmm. know who's coming out of this regional. What I do know is there's no other team uh, that LSU is going to face that is going to throw anything or have anything they haven't seen multiple times and have been able to beat multiple times this season. What was last what, uh, what was last week like? Your broadcast partner Doug Thompson said it's harder to win in Hoover than it is in Omaha. It's a and grind. Then you look up and they've got eight national seeds and they've got two number two seeds in A and M and Tennessee that feel as dangerous as anybody in the country. What was that watching the whole league play against one another? Well, it's one of the more exciting times of the year, I think. I mean, it's it's tough because I think a lot of your top seeds. I mean, there were a number of schools that went to Hoover who I felt like to me, already knew what their fate was. They were either going to host, they were going to be a national seed. So then it's an opportunity to get some work, not take off a whole week, uh, get your guys some innings throwing, get your some guys, you know, at bats, and maybe find some guys that you're trying to to move up as far as a a depth uh, situation goes. So for that reason, you know, that's what that tournament's for. There's some teams that go over there that are trying to get into the postseason. Right. And they got to they gotta scratch, claw, right. do everything yeah. they can to win a bunch of games. Uh, I didn't think LSU was in that situation. Didn't think Arkansas was in that situation. Really didn't think Vandy was in that situation. But I think when we Florida. finally get – in Florida. Right. When we finally get to Omaha and whatever, you know, bracket that looks like, it's not going to surprise me if, you know, again, the NCAA committee does it they try to do it balanced so that they pair regionals together. Obviously, Baton Rouge and Lexington, that's a possible two SEC teams trying to get to Omaha. I get that. But the, the teams and the talent and the coaches that you see in Hoover are, again, there's yeah. nothing they're going to see in Omaha that they haven't battled uh, and, and that they're going to go into a matchup going, oh, my gosh. Baseball has been the biggest winner of the SEC network, in my opinion. Yeah, it's I think, caught up to. It's almost got the reputation within its own sport as football. Best facilities, best coaches, best players come out of the league. Football, same thing, right? You can you can argue, and and I think this is an easy argument to win that SEC baseball is more dominant than SEC football is more on a on a national scale. I agree. Like, I mean, I just think it's that's. Deeper. It's you know you hear the old saying they beat each other up in SEC mm-hmm. football. Well, they certainly do that in SEC baseball. And every team that comes out, whether it's you know one of the top seeds in the NCAA tournament or one of the lower seeds that is on the road in regional play, I mean, for example, Clemson. You know, people talk about Clemson being the hottest team in the country, and that may be true. I mean, they certainly got the job done in the ACC tournament, but they got Tennessee coming to their place. Yeah, and get ready, Clemson, yeah. because hey, Wake Forest is a good team. Clemson's a good team. Obviously, Miami's a good team. But you cannot tell me top to bottom the ACC battles like the SEC. So get ready for that number two seed volunteers coming to uh, uh, Clemson this week. I've heard whispers about Stanford all year. Like, Stanford, you better buckle up. Here comes A&M. A&M's on the <laughs> I mean, way. Like, I mean, that that's, is... a team, that's a team that I think Schloss Nagel, when we played Texas A&M talking to the folks from the Aggies, they said, hey, look, there's a couple of things they want to find, and that is solidify their starting pitcher. And over the last three to four weeks, they were able to really find four legitimate starters. And they were able to continue that and make a run all the way to the title game, which I I just didn't have Texas A&M picked to make it all the way to Sunday. But now all of a sudden they've got 
a, a deeper pitching staff. So yeah, um, it's it's it, they talked about it during the bracket show, and I think maybe it got loud enough that college baseball's got to go in the way college basketball did and come up with a new way to develop this RPI. Mm-hmm. Because to me, it makes no sense if you play. 10 top 25 teams on your schedule conference or out of conference but you only go two and eight i mean i I don't know that the the scheduling should weigh that much i understand strength of schedule but at some point that shouldn't be the end all be all because again stanford may win the regional they're playing at home yeah but my favorite would be (laughs) texas (laughs) a&m coming out of palo alto i agree so yeah the sec to me is i mean we talk about it all the time jay says it best i mean there's sec baseball and then there's the rest of college baseball and that's just the way it is that's right um you've been you've been pretty in front of this stuff so you can't be surprised to see how much confusion is coming out of destin on the nil stuff right gosh i mean do you see like sankey is confused like saban brian kelly jim like they're all like I don't know. Uh, we we don't. I don't. Know I, I sent a text to our good buddy Ross Dellinger yesterday. I read his article in, in SI, and what caught me was as I was flipping through the headlines, I see that somebody in Destin, you know, referred to it as money laundering. Yes. Which I mean, that'll stop you in your tracks, right? I mean, and so that was that caught my attention. I read the article. The comment, let's be all honest. Let, let's all be honest. We're money laundering. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, but you know, again, it's, it's, it's here. They, it, and I agree. I think that's part of the confusion is that there's a lot of people that go, look, we kind of opened up this valve, if you will, the, 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 mm-hmm. the spigot's wide open. Yeah, the faucet's rolling. Yeah, it is rolling. Now, how do we contain it and how do we control it to make sure that it's, everybody's on an even playing field? And that is to protect not only the schools, but it also is to protect the student athletes. There's a lot of ramifications um, when you start to get paid for some, anything, yeah. no matter what you do. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think it is something that they're still trying to get their, their arms and head around as to how to best regulate this. Although I was impressed that Coach Sankey basically, you know, challenged uh, the federal government. Mm-hmm. said, you guys either come up with something that mm-hmm. is uniform, state to state, mm-hmm. or the SEC is going to do it. Yeah. And, you know, we all know that when the SEC decides we're going to set the tone <laughs> and, and set the rules, if nobody else does, they will. Well, the he, real Southern Exchange Commission. He, he's about he's about to flex. <laughs> yes, he like, is. He's, he's, but he understands. He's gearing up like I'm going to have he to understands, show my weight. He's got to because yep. he understands he's got athletic directors, presidents, and coaches that and say, "Look, we don't we need some help here." And is he about to start fighting legislators? I mean, he's about to he's about to go toe to toe with states. <laughs> yeah, not <man. laughs> I mean, like <laughs> people always wonder how powerful is the about, SEC. It just means more. We're about to find out. We're about to see. I man. just, I, but I, I, I do, man. I think it's a it's a concern um, again for both sides. I don't think mm-hmm. this is school versus student athletes. I think this is schools trying to help student athletes, right. but make sure that everybody is is being involved and included here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there, I don't think there's any easy answers at the moment. Uh, this is a great time of the year. Yeah. I know for for you and your business that that you know I mean it's it's called, kind of like calling big league baseball. Yeah, it's coming that. down the stretch, and and you know first of all it's it's been a long year, fun year. It's always mm-hmm. a fun year, mm-hmm. but to to always have this type of opportunity mm-hmm. to make it to Omaha uh, if you can, but just the excitement of the regional at the box, uh, a super regional at the box. Mm-hmm. I remember the 2017 year, you know Mississippi State came. Up. I mean that was oh that was great. that was an incredible that experience. And I got asked this morning on the way over here, and you guys can chime in because uh, I don't have the answer. Mm-hmm. Saturday night in Death Valley, mm-hmm. Alec Box during a regional or super regional. Now I said the decibel level can't be matched; mm-hmm. it's just sheer numbers mm-hmm. alone. But I've always said home field advantage is not that it necessarily lifts the home team, absolutely. but it absolutely hammers the opponent. It and to me, the hell out of them. Saturday night in Death Valley and a regional Alec Box Stadium means trouble for the opponent. I, I, I told it coming in, Chris. I remember this this weekend as vividly from a childhood as I do anything. I can remember because it was it was pushed back a couple of. It used to yeah. be a little earlier when we were kids. So like it was like the end of school checking out of school early type stuff. What a great time. Grandfather, <laughs> come get you. And I can remember walking, you know, into the box on a Friday at noon and not leaving until Sunday, right? Like, I mean, like you would leave there at 11, be back for 10 the next morning, leave there at 11 that night, back for noon the next day, leaving at 8 that night. And it was just as 
big of a home field advantage as Tiger Stadium could create because you could see the eyeballs of the opponents when they walk, especially these teams like uh, Oregon State, who's going to come in here for the first time. They got no idea. They've just heard about it. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? You just, I and just I can heard. tell you, because I spent uh, the longest year of my life in a week in Corvallis, <laughs> Oregon. And I can tell you, and they were as good, you know, again, they were sure. buying for a title at that point. That atmosphere – Dude, it. I mean, you heard birds chirping. I'm sure it's it's. It, I mean, it's you cannot be <laughs> farther opposites than than what they're going to see. Right. Um, and so yeah, that that does make it exciting. But I mean, you know, Sam Houston's going to come in. Mm-hmm. They're going to play in probably one of the bigger ballparks they played in. But it's not just the surroundings. It's just the energy and the vibe. No doubt about it. I mean, you literally can. Yeah, I think my dad put it best. Like you can. You go to a game over there when it is cranked on 11, and when the game's over, you could almost just get off your feet, and people will carry you out <laughs> yeah. to your car. Know. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the type of energy that's there. I mean, the Friday night game, LSU-Tennessee, that Friday night mm-hmm. where it was, it was uh, Dolander versus Schemes. Yeah. The traffic getting out of the box was well, LSU football. Football traffic. Yes, it was. It was LSU football. I mean, it was. Yeah. we just sat and hung out. Like, we're not moving. <laughs> and, <laughs> Uh, have a great call this weekend. Hey, looking forward to Good it. To I, we're going to have we're going to have Buzzy and Doug, three man booth, wow. man. It's going to be wow. fun. Wow, that's great. Those two guys are fun, so we'll have a great time. Uh, Blair and the boys on the call tomorrow, two o'clock first pitch, which means one thirty pregame for you on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Wherever you are, you can catch it and look. Tune in for them uh, on social media. It's great to go inside of the box with them and watch the calls. And you can always check it up on, online at uh, LSU Sports at not LSU Sports dot net. You can watch them uh, on YouTube. Sorry. Yeah, you can do the whole thing. Yeah. Do the whole thing. Uh, Chris Blair, The Voice, here every Thursday. We're back and closing it out on the Jordy Collada Show, built by RMB. Donaldsonville Glass and Body, the trusted name in frame, body, and automotive paint repair since 1977. They have served their customers for over 45 years. You can find them online at dgbauto.com or stop in and see them Railroad Avenue and Division Street out in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Look, they can help you with your insurance claims. They can make the repair process as stress-free as possible. I'm speaking from experience here. I've got numerous windshields, body repair, all done by Kenny and the crew over at Donaldsonville Glass and Body. They are, without question, the most well-equipped shop in the area. Stop in and see them today. Shop them online, dgbauto.com, or stop in and see the crew over in Division Street in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Donaldsonville Glass and Body. Hey, fellas, it's Jordy Collada for my friends over at Men's Total Health. Guys, do you suffer from fatigue, decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, weight gain or loss, loss of muscle mass, signs of depression, anxiety, hair loss, mental fall, general loss of interest, then you might be suffering from low testosterone. Go see my friend Mike Roach and his great team over at Men's Total Health over in Metairie at menstotalhealth.net online and stop in and see how they can change your life today. A simple shot and some knowledge from Mike Roach can get you back up, moving with your energy, get your sex drive back, build your muscle mass, make you feel young again. All online, menstotalhealth.net. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each experienced our own versions of life, but in the end, we're all on the same team. I'm part of that team, along with these players in purple and gold. Kayshawn Buddha, Malik Neighbors, Miles Frazier, Kyron Lacey, Greg Brooks. Whether on the field or in the courtroom, your team matters. So join our team. Make a difference. Bet. Let's get it done. 
The Journey Collider Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225 485 8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done. Are you looking for sound financial advice? Then get in touch with Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. You can call him today at 225-261-8262 or email him daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. If you're planning for retirement, saving for college, for children or grandchildren, or just looking for sound investment opportunities, get in touch with Daniel today, 225-261-8262. Located on Magnolia Square Drive in Central, Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. Don't let the name fool you. Men's Total Health has offerings for the ladies too. Guys, is your wife or partner suffering from urinary incontinence, low sexual desire, or pain during sex? Then the O-Shot might be for her. Don't let it scare you. It's totally natural. It's PRP. And Mike Roach and the crew at Men's Total Health will make you as comfortable as you can be. Contact me for more information, katie at jordycoladashow.com, and I'm happy to tell you everything that Men's Total Health has to offer for the ladies. Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. All right, welcome back here. Thursday edition of the Jordy Collada Show. Cl uh, closing it out here, coming down the stretch of this Thursday. Good stuff from Blair as they'll be on the call for the LSU Regional. Three-man booth. That's as good as it gets, man. Uh, to me, LSU's radio calls of John Brady and Chris Blair. If you've listened to basketball on the radio, and I don't know how many of you have, because it's, you know, it's kind of tough. It's a tough medium to, to listen to. I mean, it's a very colorful game, right, basketball? But Blair and Brady do as good a job, and I know I'm biased um, for, for both of them. You know, Blair's a friend, and you know Brady's like a second dad to me. Um, that they do it better than anybody. I mean, that <laughs> they're really elite at that. I mean, because it's very hard to do that. And, and I'm, seeking, I'm speaking from experience. I've done basketball play by play, and I'll never forget the first time I did basketball play by play and thought I could just jump in and do it, and was. It Swallowed was like up. running on a treadmill going way, way too fast for you. You know what I mean? Like I was 
calling the play that happened, you know, three sequences ago. I mean, and trying to work a color commentator into that. I mean, it's very, it's very hard. It's very challenging. And Blair and Brady make that as as easy to listen to as you can find. The three man booth of Doug Thompson, Buzzy Heidel, and Chris Blair on a baseball call to me is must listen. First off, baseball to me is a very radio listenable game. Like I, I, I enjoy listening. To, and that kind of may be a little old, um, but uh, I love listening to baseball on the radio. Um, and for those three, obviously Doug and, and Buzzy being friends and, and, and the storytellers they are, and Blair, you know, being such a professional and how good he is at his job, um, it, it's just it, it's cool to hear that man. So they'll be on the call tomorrow at uh, at two o'clock um, as uh, game one of the. LSU Regional between the Tigers and the Greenies uh, will come your way on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Paul Skeen's named National Player of the Year today. We mentioned LSU's only had two of those in program's history, and that being uh, Lloyd Peaver, a My name pitcher Jake. in uh, – 1992. How Todd Walker did not win that. That's what I would not. Lloyd Peaver was not on my mesmerizing. list. Mesmerizing. I mean, like that is that that is, uh, and, and not to. I mean, don't know, I'm not discrediting Lloyd Peaver. It wasn't 90. I think Lloyd Peaver was 95. Um, but, I mean, who beat Todd Walker in 92 for that award? I mean, there was a better player in the country than Todd Walker in 92. Um, who? Lloyd Peaver for 1992 transferred to LSU 14-0, 1.98 ERA. Because three, he was great. Three complete games and shutouts and a shutout in 17 appearances. He was great. He was great. He also um, he took a shot off of his head. Oh, that was kind of like the diff. That, that's what that, that was kind of like the that was the first time I'd ever seen that. Oh, a come back or catch somebody back to the pitcher. I mean, it's off of an aluminum bat in mm. 1992, Coach. I think might as well be a bullet. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and it went. It probably went 20 feet in the air. Wow. I mean, like, it, it, it bounced off his head. Make a play. It was, it was scary. You dude. know the first time I ever saw somebody take a ball off their head? I was, tw- I was 11 years old. Probably, that was probably, that was probably the same. I was 11 year. years old, and there was this kid in our league. He was, honestly, he, he looked older than he was, but he was, he was our age. And he would hit the ball like there was a barbershop across the street from the field that we played on. He would hit the ball behind oh, the barbershop. Light tower power. And so, like, our ace is on the mound. Like, this dude's shoving. Throws him a fastball probably on a 0-2 count. Dude hits it right back. Boink. If it didn't hit his bill of his hat, it would have killed him. <laughs> I, I think that was probably the case with Peaver. I mean, I'm serious. If it would not have been a little distracted. Yeah. Like, if it, it had hit him dead on. It would have killed him. I, it it might have killed him. I mean, like, it was. He still has a scar. On it was his one of the scariest it. things I've ever seen. At the, the sound of it, man. Oh, it the sound like is a, bizarre. The, it sounds like an oak tree. Uh huh. Yeah, like it sounds like that oak. Like, if you were to hit an oak tree, with an get that, that solid just boom. I mean, it was just. And he just. It hit him and he just sat down. Mm. <laughs> he was just like. So McDonald won it in 89, Peaver won it in 92. Uh, and then Skeens wins it in 23 for LSU. I mean, like, how? Like, Bregman missed out on this award? That, that's what I would, that was going to be my guess. It was going to be um, Batman or, or Bregman. And I uh, didn't see Lloyd Peaver. Ray Rimes? I, no. Um, Todd Walker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. thought Todd Walker for sure. And then I thought, well, if it's not him, it's going to be Bregman. Right. But. And then I the, mean, even Dylan Cruz, yeah. I mean, like, that's no, what I was about I, to say. And the, this Dylan Cruz will be lost in the annals of history in this award for the LSU list. You're like, oh wait, so this is the what national Paul player do? of the year or pitcher of the year? National this is player. player. This is the player of the year, but, but this, this is not the Golden Spikes no, award. No, that's this a, is, no. This is okay, so is Cruz a finalist for the Golden Spikes? Yes, but okay, him and Skeens okay, are both. Okay, both okay. I mean, think about if you have the national player of the year and the Golden Golden Spikes Spikes award winner, and they're two different people. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? We had to give one to get the other. Usually they both, you know, one gets both. Yeah, unanimous. Right, right. But this is almost um, like college football award season where you have to give somebody to the Maxwell to give the other guy the Heisman. It's like, here, you get something, but you're not going to get the big award. You know, they do that in award season where – Oh, you can win the sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless you have a season like Burrow, where it's like you get right. this, you well, get I mean, this, you, you get can't, this, you I mean, get this. What am I yeah. gonna do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he's winning the Davey O'Brien. <laughs> what are you gonna do? If you have an ounce of respect for yourself, I mean, you might as well give him that offensive line award. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, give him the Joe Moore award. At one point, the season was like, "What is Joe Burrow not gonna win this year?" 
Right. Like, exactly. The Thorpe. The, the Thorpe. The, <laughs> I mean, the Panerica one. Like, oh, skis man. Skis the same way. Yeah. Yeah, if there wasn't Dylan Cruz, it would be a clean It'd be a sweep. Right. And Air Force just got another pitcher in the I court. saw that. Thursday 95. Yes, yeah, Come over here, on, you'll throw 105. Yeah. We could fix you. What do you know about this track, man? <laughs> Do a lot of things over here. Throw it at that net. Um, all right, so we appreciate you. Hit that like button, share button, comment button. We'll be back with you tomorrow to close out the week on this Friday. Finals It'll be tonight. regional day. Final start tonight. Who we got? Who we got, boys? Oh, I got, uh, oh. I got nuggets. I, it's hard for me to go against Denver right I know, now. And everybody's picking Denver, too. I hate that. But I like um, my I'm, – I'm yeah, Miami. I know. I'm going Lil J took Miami, um, and I, I told him I respect him for that. It's my story. Um, I had a great dad it. moment, by the way, yesterday. Went to the batting cages over there at Marucci uh, on Segan. Uh, Has anybody been here? No, no. This can expose you real quick, right? Which uh, we were talking about, Skip, ooh, oh, before the show. You got to get you a nice bet. Um, and Magic to me, speak. one of Skip's legacy that is left out of the book is Skip Bertman's Grand Slam. If you were my age and you grew up in Baton Rouge, you know all about Skip Bertman's Grand Slam. It was a spot in Industrial Plex in the 80s. And this is when Industrial Plex might as well have been the Sahara Desert. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, Jesus. there was nothing, nothing over there. Like, I mean, like, there was, like, gravel roads. I mean, it was, it was literally like they were, like, trying to figure out all the, the, the reason why they had developed it was just to be a cut through from Segan to airline. Yeah. They had no idea that they were going to make it, like, a business, yeah. you know, something, like, something area. Right? Oh, until I mean, you met like, Skip Burton. But guess who figured it out first? <laughs> <laughs> Old Stan, <laughs> old Skip. I yeah, so we got a plot of land over there that they'll give it away. Oh. You know what I mean? They'll give it to us. I gotta take this land. So man. look, he puts a he puts a warehouse building over there, and he's got like six batting cages, and in the back, he's got like what could have been almost like a indoor baseball on turf deal mm-hmm. that you could turn into a full basketball court. I'm telling you, like our parents when we were. Jay's age, they drop us off at ten, pick us up at five. See you later. Everything, you, everything you want is like here. It's everything you can eat nachos and pizza all day. I mean, like Here's Skip, a, Skip's got his daughters running it. You know what I mean? Like, ten all bucks and straight going. cash. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> just cash. You get a token back. You go into whatever batting cage you want. You can rip the basketball court all day. I mean, it was a like it was awesome speaking of money laundering it yeah. was awesome i mean yes exactly I mean, like, put a quarter in see what comes out running the racket i mean the place was awesome man but for whatever reason it's vanished and like no one ever like there's right. not even a picture of it you know what i mean like if i was Benary, if i was smoke if i was like you know what I mean? like just put my name on it you know what i mean like there you go let's skip keep getting the the you know a percentage of it but i mean the place was a lottery ticket <laughs> Well, now Marucci has that swing house mm-hmm. over on Segan in Industrial Place. Is that where you it could backs up? The bats it, and like stuff? they own the city block, mm-hmm. and like they've got, you know, like they're make, you know, they're making bats and gloves and doing all the uniforms. Of I mean, just doing all types of stuff. Well, there's a batting cage back there too that mm-hmm. I, I, I really I kind of I, I didn't know that I didn't know that it existed either, um, and it's like a up to date batting cage you know what i mean like it's got like the the screen like it shows you where the ball's going the whole thing and there's like four cages that you can pick from you know softball baseball and you can control the speed from 35 miles an hour to 70 miles an hour is the limit is the limit the governor so Lil j and his buddy his friend I get home in the afternoon. I'm like, what do y'all want to do? And they're like, well, we, baseball's been coming up a lot in the house. Yes. So we go out, we throw the baseball a little bit, and I'm like, where can we hit, man? So I, like, you know, Google a spot. This Marucci swing house comes up. So we drive over there, and we buy six rounds. You get 18 pitches per round. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And we bought six rounds. And each, you know, like, well, there's three of us. Yeah. So everybody got one. And... Lil J gets in there first, and we set it at 50 miles an hour. Good starting. Good starting. Good starting. Yeah, you get 30s, lolly end. 12, right. yeah, that's yeah, right. That's yeah, fine. 30s. I mean, yeah. softball. Yeah. yeah. So Respect your kid. Um, yeah. So he does, he does pretty well. You know, not bad for being as rusty as everybody is mm-hmm. here. You know what I mean? The friend gets in there, and he trips all over himself. Oh, so Jay's man, he's, he's laughing at him. He's lighting him up. So I, at this point, I'm kind of thinking I'm just going to let them use the six. Well, I'm kind of like talking a little, you know, like, like, like <laughs> hey, geez, laughing at this Yeah, <laughs> show you something. You know, what I mean? like they got some people in there too that are kind of like looking at him, and I can tell they're like sizing them up. And I'm like, 
these dudes think y'all are clowns, <laughs> y'all, bro. Y'all are trash. Like, like, I mean, like, y'all, they've been in here all week. Yeah, y'all look like like I'm babysitting. Yeah, you know, like I'm trying to find a place to kill some time for y'all. And like Jay's like, well, why don't you jump in there? I'm like, give me the bat. Show you some son. Son. So, <laughs> Learn you something. 18 pitches, 12, and they show you where the ball, like they single foul ball out. Oh, okay. You know I mean? Yeah, like, this is enough for interpretation. Yeah, right. Like they show you where it's going off a of contact. And so 12 out of 18, coach, I'm putting into play mm-hmm. after all yeah. these kids. And I probably hadn't swung a bat over a decade. Yeah, no doubt. Decade. Or a Jacques softball tournament that yeah. I embarrassed myself at like, somewhere along the way. Um, That'll take you out the game. Yes. Yeah, we'll, like, forget <laughs> that. Yeah, I'm done with this. I, I got no reason to do this anymore. Um, so then we go through the, the round again. They get a little bit better. And I say, give me the 70. Let's let's put this let, let's put max, this, thing, max thing, uh, this bitch out. Let's see after what, I've slowed y'all down a little bit. Let's see what this bit. machine's got. Yeah. Turn yeah. Me <laughs> yeah, man, let's see what you got. You bum. <laughs> and coach, out of eighteen pitches, I mean, look, I fouled off the majority. Well, you, of course, of them, yeah. the majority of them. But the fact that I was making contact, no strikeouts. Uh, probably, there probably was one in there. Yeah, there was That's probably right. one in there. There was probably one in there. I mean, look, man, when you whiff on a baseball, it's a very unathletic it, feeling. It feels. It feels very Not like. A, I mean, you're kind of like finished up, like, ugh. Well, okay, my intention was shake that out. Yeah, right? My intention like, was to hit it, and I did not. Um, but well, now that I know this place exists. Yes, I, I kind of want to go. Yeah, you should go. go. Yeah. It's a great, it's great content. They, oh, absolutely. It's they great. give you a bat, imagine bat, and you do the whole helmet. thing, bro. Yeah. You do the whole thing. You can walk in there and, and just, hey, man, I've never seen a baseball in my life. How do I hit one? Like, right this way. You know what I mean? This Here's your helmet. Is... Here's a bat. You can do these gloves if you want. I mean, the place is, I'm the sure they're retail all... area is tight. You know what I mean? Like, I like to take my kid there. Dude, I you know better, you better leave your credit card. I, was, I know, because he is a... Quick. He is a. I mean, didn't get oh, ugly. that's a nice bat right ugly. there. Uh-huh. I mean, the baseball gear. Oh, baseball gear is stupid. It's. I mean, like outside of the travel ball, like I'm renting hotel Coach. rooms. I gotta. Fly. Yeah, you're in a dangerous game here. I gotta sign here. my pay up. Yeah. I gotta do my. I mean, like and every then weekend. I gotta, and I don't even have a hat. Nope. I don't even have a glove yet. And these bats cost five hundred bucks, and I gotta buy a new one every year. Yeah. I mean, Marucci, what a, what a, this guy. I bought my kid a Marucci T-ball bat last year, and it was like $70. Put this guy on Shark like, Tank. It was a T-ball bat. I and remember going to, to Walmart buying T-ball bats. Just yeah, to just taking it off the shelf. It. Right. Like. Uh, 104 net poll question. What feels worse, whiffing on a teed up golf ball? Oh, that has to be, I've never even uh, done it. Or whiffing on a pitch. I feel like a golf ball by a landslide. I, I agree. I mean, anything that's sitting stationary mm-hmm. that you whiff on. But I mean, it's I mean, all, like you need to just kind of put it up. Base, right? I feel like baseball, like a soft toss, is a but little I have whiffed on the golf ball before. Yeah. Baseball soft toss is a little easier to hit than you just stepping up the first time going up to a golf ball and thinking you're about to hit it. Coach, like, well, a, a seventy mile an hour fastball coming at you cold. Like, hadn't swung a bat in over a year or two, and you just step into the cage, and here comes 70 right at you, and you're supposed to react. Like, you you got to uh, swing when that thing leaves the, you know, like, if you got the bat on the shoulder, but when it's, like, ejected, you're done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, like yeah, anticipatory. Oh, oh, shit. Get you know, back in this like, thing. Well, let me try to time this thing, and then you're, like, two seconds late. You yeah. know, it's like, boom, hits the back, and you're still swinging. You're like... All right. hey, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, turn this thing off for a minute. Hold on, hold on. Quit this <laughs> that, time out. That just reminds me. And then like, there's no stopping the pitch. You just poop yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, you're, right, like, right, I, you're in it now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're in it. You gotta <laughs> <do> these things. <laughs> in it. I remember my, our high school baseball coach bought like a new pitching machine and they could throw curveballs. Yeah, this thing can throw a curve. And he was like, well, we were facing this like really good pitcher. He was committed to Nichols and he threw like 88. This dude goes up there and he puts the pitching machine on like 95 and with a banger, throwing, throwing curveballs. <laughs> Brady sliders. Johnson, like, like bro, you're not seeing 95 tomorrow. This machine's gonna win the Cy Young, coach. <laughs> I love this thing. Right. And that's exactly how it was. Like, I Can love we this dress thing. this thing out? Yeah, and he's like showing the ball, uh, like, putting it in there, passing his head. The on. laziest man of all time. Yes. What are you doing? He can't. He, can't. <laughs> he threw his arm out throwing BP. Yeah, that's what you do. And then you get like you go live. You get somebody that's like somewhat good on your team to throw you some like live action BP. You don't get a pitching machine out there. Dude, he got the the state of the art. I've been seeing a pitching machine. Roger Clemens. Yeah. 
Yes, the one that can like throw yeah, right. fly balls. Like, <laughs> here comes the rocket. Yeah. Uh, hit that like button, share button, comment button. Have a great Thursday. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning Pitching at machines. 7 a.m. 12 18. <laughs>